Hello and welcome to the Vibrant Music Teacher Chat. This is the weekly show on YouTube where we go over the latest news and goings on in the music teaching industry and dive into one special topic each week. This week I'm sharing seven of my favorite iPad apps and I'm actually going to do a few bonuses as well, so make sure you stay tuned in for that. If we've never met before, hello, welcome, it's so great to have you here. My name is Nicola Canton and I run a site called Vibrant Music Teaching, which is a membership for music teachers and also, of course, this YouTube channel where we share some tips and tutorials later on in the week and this show every Monday afternoon here in Dublin, which is morning time in the US and Canada. So if you are new here, make sure to say hello in the chat. We are super friendly, super non-judgmental and fun. So we would love to welcome you in. Now it's time to warm up. Each week we do a bit of a warm up, but before we get to that, we need to pick our special snap camera. So this is a bit of fun. Every week we have an ask me anything section at the end where you can literally ask about any burning question on, on your mind. And you can do that throughout the show and I'll come back to all of them at the end. So you just type the word question followed by your question and I will get back to as many of those as I can at the end of the show. Now during that last section, we like to have a bit of fun and make me look slightly embarrassing. So you get to pick from two different options for funny cameras. Here is the first one. This one we're going to call skunk. It's called bald skunk. So if you want to vote for this, you're going to write skunk in the chat. If you want to vote for... Oh, sorry. If you want to vote for this one, you're going to write big. <laughs> so skunk. This is skunk. I know my hair kind of comes through. That's part of the fun. Skunk or big. Which one are we going to do today? Do, 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 do. We're going to a bit of a hair theme. I think it's fun, especially since, I mean, my hair could have looked like this, honestly. I know it's still a bit frizzy, but it was windy here today, so you could have had this for real seats. Uh, Denise is voting for skunk. Corey says big. Anna says big. Another vote for big. Oh, this is a close one this week. I chose well. I'm going to go back to Skunk just for fairness to show it. <laughs> sorry. That was way too loud for the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gary, that was very funny. Uh, I vote for big. Didn't realize I had an actual photo of me when I wake up in the morning. Yeah, that's fair. This is me when I get home from the park. This is what it genuinely looks like after I've been out for a walk with my dog. Okay, more votes for big, so we're gonna go with that. <laughs> yeah, it is super like 80s rock kind of look, right? Super fun. Okay, so we'll come back to this at the end. Ask your questions because the more questions you ask, the longer I will stay like this at the end. So just start with the word question and then write a question about anything. Doesn't have to be about our topic today. Okay, here we go. We're going to do our warm up starting with Rhythm Railroad. So if you're not familiar with Rhythm Railroad, don't worry, I'll clue you in. We're going to practice together. So the first thing to go through is the symbols. The light green one, that's a foot, so you stamp your foot. The two hands, that's tap both hands on your legs, on a table, whatever suits. I do them in the air here on the show just to show you. And then the orange is on your shoulders, okay? So we are going to practice first. I'll just count and we'll go through them together. Are you ready? Even when my students say they're not ready, I go, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to do that to you too, because I can't hear you. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two, three and four, and one and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think we're ready. Let's give it a go. This is going to be a backing track for this. All our Rhythm Railroad series come with a backing track, a slow one and a fast one. We do the fast one here on the show because I think, you know, we're up for the challenge, even if we mess it up. So there's going to be one bar of intro, 
just the drummer, and then we'll come in together. Here we go. track on this one. I love the variety of these. Okay, how did it go? Let me know. And we'll try the second one. We do two of these each week. So this one is in 3-4. I'm going to use Kadai rhythm syllables or my modification of those. We have the light blue, which is one hand taps. We have yellow, which is touch your head. And we have the foot again. <laughs> Our favorite, right, Lee? Okay, let's try it. One, sorry, ready, set, go. Ta, ta, to. Sorry, I'm going to start again. I don't know what I'm doing. Ready, set, go. Ta, ta, to. Ta, two, three. Ta, ta, to. T, 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 t. Ta, t, t, ta. Ta, t, t, ta. Ta, two, three. Ta, ta, ta. Sorry, it's when I'm standing up that the foot I just find so hard because I'm trying to make a sound so you can hear it, but I'm going to have to give up with making a sound. <laughs> We're going to try it with the track. Let's give it a go. This one is going to have two bars of intro, two measures of intro because it's in 3-4. <laughs> So that would have been a great occasion for all my students to laugh at me, which I love because they get to see um, see me messing up. And yeah, it's always fun for them to see me messing up and just being okay with it, laughing it off. I think that's a great example from the teacher. Okay, last little warm up is our singing warm up. And this is our sulfur one. <laughs> I agree. It's very funny. My students could get that, honestly. It's my coordination issues. Okay, so this is our singing warm up. This is sulfur railroad level one. So it only includes la, me, and so, which makes it a great introduction if you're new to sulfur and you just want to dip your toe in the water. Okay, so we're not going to practice this one. We're just going to go straight in because I think you can kind of read the music just fine. I'm going to do the sulfur hand signs and I want you to sing along. Even if you don't use the sulfur words and you prefer something else like do 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 or peanut butter cocoa pops, whatever, you sing along at home and I'll do the hand signs for you. Here we go. Hope that went well for you. We've been really enjoying getting back into the singing ones in my studio, certainly. And I hope you feel warmed up and ready for your week ahead, especially if you're doing this on the Monday morning. News, news, news. Let me know your news. I'd love to hear it. What's going on in your studio? How are things? I know many of you have spring break this week or the week before, the week before that. Are you feeling rejuvenated? Are you feeling like... I couldn't possibly take a break and I spent the whole week working. How's it going for you? I'd love to hear. Uh, we have a lot going on around here at VMT HQ, as we might call it, which is, you know, my house. Um, because I'm preparing for the Teacher Turbo Boost, which is our conference happening next week. So this is the last time you're going to hear about it. If you want to come along live or watch the replays, you need to get a ticket now. It's at teacherturboboost.com teacherturboboost.com. So if you want to join us for that, I would love to have you there. All the details are on that page. Um, the price is super cheap. It's only $69 for the whole week. That's it. 
okay, 69 US dollars, but all the guests and their sessions are listed there as well as all the details about what's included. It's a really fun week. We did it last year for the first time. So this is our second time doing it. It's going to be even better. So you don't want to miss it. So I've been preparing for that and trying to sort of go easy on myself, which made the latest episode, not the latest, the one before the latest episode of the Beyond Measure podcast really valuable for me. So if you're looking for something to listen to, if you're feeling as Christina was a bit disappointed in yourself, or if, like me, you're just feeling like it's kind of nothing is enough. And it's not like I'm super down, I'm not, this isn't me spilling my guts to you, but I just, you know, when you're feeling just a little bit like, is it good enough? Am I doing enough? And I am. But, you know, you need that reassurance sometimes. So that was a great pick me up from Christina or a little bit of empathy and a great story about her student um, in a performance. So I won't spoil it, but that's the Beyond Measure podcast. Highly recommend that show. Love Christina's whole outlook and approach to podcasting. It's fantastic. We also had a new episode of our own podcast, which is about the number one mistake I see teachers making with iPads. So that's a great primer or a little, um, not aperitif, what am I looking, Did you, digestif, um, after you watch this show to go back and listen to that podcast and just mull on that a little bit because it's not all about adding lots and lots of new apps. So I'm going to suggest some today, but that's not everything, okay? So definitely listen to that podcast if you can. And we um, have a new video on the YouTube channel last week. So if you want to check that out, that's about how much practice beginners should do. Very simple topic, but one that people don't really talk about in an honest way. They just sort of say 30 minutes and leave it at that. So that's, I would love to hear your thoughts on that video. I'm definitely not the only one, the only opinion that matters on that, right? Every teacher has their own way of looking at it. So I'd appreciate your comments there as well. And I've also enjoyed the last week watching MTNA from afar, even though I haven't enrolled in it. So I haven't, it was a virtual conference. Sorry, that's Music Teachers National Association. And they do a conference every year. And I hadn't, I wasn't enrolled in it or like I wasn't attending virtually. But I've enjoyed through Instagram and things watching the little virtual conference watching party that Joy Morin and Amy Chaplin and Christina Whitlock, who we just mentioned, and Jana Williamson were having. And Amy hosted it. And so Amy is the blogger behind pianopantry.com. So she shared some of the recipes that they've been using. Might be a good place to go to look for new recipes um, as she was hosting the gang this week. But I've just really enjoyed watching from afar, like, of hanging out together and watching the conference. I think it's a great way to do a virtual conference if you can. I think getting together with some teacher friends uh, and doing it that way is absolutely lovely. And if you have a teacher friend nearby, you could do that for the Turbo Boost next week. Obviously, you don't have a ton of time to plan it, so it would need to be someone nearby. But if you do have a local teacher friend, I think that'd be really fun to have you both watch together and do the Zooms together even as a pair would be really, really fun. Um, We also have a new member feature that you may have already seen, but in case you're a member and you're watching and haven't seen this, we now have a podcast version of Tweak of the Week. So those are the little bite-sized nuggets um, for any week. I mean, any week, but especially the weeks when you feel like I don't have time to learn something new or try anything new or you know, I just don't have time. Well, the tweaks of the week are exactly for that situation. And now they come in a podcast form so you can get them delivered to your phone and not even think about it. Just listen to like one to two minutes and then put it into practice during your lessons. No extra time required. So if you're, if you're a member and you haven't seen that, go check out the community for details on that. And then a last little shout out is to a blog post, which is from Rosemary Penner. And she posted about female composers and their influence in, their influence really. So that's theunfinishedlesson.com is her blog. And I 
thought it was really interesting to read and she's very diverse in what she's including from pop to composers from different countries, all sorts of things. So really interesting to hear about those different composers. And it prompted me to look up Lizzo, which is one of the singers she mentioned, um, because I realized I know of Lizzo, but from pop culture and from like the body positivity movement, not from, I couldn't think of what her songs were. And I just thought, why is that? That's ridiculous. Look it up. Maybe you'll hate it. But, and I, of course I did know some of the songs, but I hadn't associated them with her. So it was a great prompt to just look up that music and listen to some music today as I tried to take it easy while I prepare for the Turbo Boost conference next week. So that was lovely. And yes, Denise, if anyone else is wondering that same question, I know you found your answer, but there is a discount. It's in the community forum. So just go to the forums and you'll find the post there. And that'll give you a direct link for the member discount on the Turbo Boost. So I hope that helps. All right, that's all my latest news. Um, isn't it? Yes. Just checking my list there. Okay, so we're ready to dive into our main topic of today. Today, we're looking at seven different iPad apps that I use all the time. And these might not be the ones you're expecting me to mention for a music lesson. I'm not going to go through note naming apps and that kind of thing. I will actually do a bit of that at the end. I've saved some bonus recommendations to quickly speed through, but the seven I'm going to mention are the ones that right now, and this does shift all the time, right now I use regularly. So we'll go through each one one by one. You can ask me questions about them. And if you have any recommendations for iPad apps, I would love to hear them in the comments as well. Let's dive into our first iPad app. So this is my iPad screen, and this is Fourscore. So I normally use this this way, so I'll just turn my iPad around. This is the one I use at the moment to show flashcards to my students. So this is, it's really a music reading app, but as you can see here, I have Vinterval loaded up, which is our interval naming challenge. This is a gold level. This is the one my student was doing. I have all of these saved here. These are the mobile versions, which are the portrait versions. And so I just flipped through them like that. I like this because it does have the visualization of the flipping page. And I find that's handy just for students to see that the note has changed, especially when there's two similar ones in a row, especially with Mintable, where sometimes like one of the notes stays the same. There's not going to be an example here, but one of the notes might stay the same and the other one moves. So I want them to see that we've changed the page, even though it's digital. So that is a very simple one that I love using. Let me know what you use Fourscore for. I use it the most in my lessons just for those flashcards. Just flipping through flashcards, I find it's the handiest for that. It's my favorite way to do them. It's not the only way you can use a free PDF viewer. You don't have to have four score for that, but I had it anyway, started using it and I really like it. And I find it quick and easy to use for that purpose. Um, I also do have some music in four score, like which is what it's actually for, such as some of my students who um, I may not have the, like I have a digital copy of the sheet music which I printed off for them or something like that, I'll keep that in Fourscore as well. Um, Gladys, these are not all going to be free apps. In fact, I think most of them are paid, but you can look them up for the latest prices. They're different in different countries, so there's no point me telling you the price. Pretty sure Fourscore is a paid one though, so I'll tell you that much. Okay, number two is also a paid app, and this is my favorite metronome app but it is not the only one out there. I'm just going to show it to you because I use this all the time. This is called Practice Plus, and I got it when it was on special offer. So if the regular price is quite high, you probably can get a perfectly good metronome that's way cheaper. I wouldn't spend your money on it. However, if you do catch it on a special offer, or if the price has gone down since I last checked, this is my favorite one. Um, I like it because I find it intuitive. I find the sounds of it nice. You can 
change the time signature obviously over there you can change the subdivisions and you can change the emphasis as well which can be handy in some cases take it off it's just very instinctive in the way that it works and then the sound you can change here so be able to hear that sound now. So I hate that sound. <laughs> um the digital one. But maybe that's your jam. I like the analog one. But this is just the one that sounds the best. And honestly, that is extremely important to me. My ears are very easily irritated. And so having one with a good sound is super important to me. But I do like everything about how it works and how quick it is to change the tempo like that, or you can fine tune it like that. And the time, si time signatures, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can change a lot more besides and you can use it to record. I honestly don't use any of that. So that's just me, but I do like it that you can subdivide into triplets very easily and things like that. I would love to hear your favorite metronome app though. I'm sure many people use one. I'll give you one alternative. This is not a separate one of my seven, but I'll give you one alternative right away, which is the one I tell to students. Does everyone know this trick? Maybe you do. But to students, what I say is go to Google, <laughs> write the word metronome, and you will see a metronome. <laughs> So this is my, you have no excuse not to be able to do use a metronome. Cause like some will say, oh, we installed it on my mom's phone, but then she was out or blah, 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 blah. Whatever device you have, if you have access to anything with an internet browser, you have a metronome. And yes, it's simple. No, there's no different emphasis and et cetera, et cetera, but it works. And it is, you know, the correct time, which is all you actually need. Ashmantha, I'm on your dog's side. Yeah, I don't like that sound. <laughs> the digital one, I don't actually... I mean, the analog is just my favorite. I just leave it on that. I don't change it. But pretty much every other metronome app I find has a terrible sound. I'm so sorry. Some of them are just so hard to listen to. I can't do it. And you're going to listen to that sound over and over and over and over, right? So not worth it. Carrie, that's great. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. It's just, it's inside to Google. So if you didn't know that, tell all your students, there is no excuse not to use a metronome because you don't have access to one. I don't actually use a metronome that much with my students, but when you do need it, you need it. <laughs> and that is the perfect option. Now, an alternative to a metronome is my next step. This is called Super Metronome Groove Box. By the way, I did list all of these apps in the description for this video. So check out the description and you'll see everything. This is a drumming app. And it does have a metronome as well, so you could use that. But again, don't like that sound. Too uh, harsh for me. Um, there's all these different styles and you can change like the emphasis like this, right? So it's making it strong like sort of emphasized and then stronger. It's very instinctive. It's just like an 80s drum box thing. Um, and you can mess around with it or you can use like their default ones and change the tempo up there, whatever you like, change the beats, change the subdivisions. Very handy, very easy to use. Again, I think this is a paid one, but I've had it for a really long time and I use it a lot. Extremely simple now that we've... <laughs> right, you get what I'm saying. You can do any beats, any subdivision you want and change the tempo. It's called Super Metronome Groovebox. Again, the name is in the description, Corey. So that's directly below the video or to the side if you're on a different device. But it's there. I've listed all of them. It says main apps mentioned and then I've listed all the names. Um, so that's Super Metronome Groove Box. That is really handy and was one I used even more before. I still use it sometimes for variety, but now I have a Kawai NV10 in my main teaching space. And in the other teaching space, we have an NV5, which is the Nova series. So they're, they're hybrid pianos and they have a touchscreen on the side. 
and it has drummers built in. So I use that quite a lot now. Now I will say there's only one option in 3-4, which really annoys me and I feel like I must be missing something, but I've asked for another teacher who works there and he can't figure out how to make other ones that are not 4-4. Four four. So anyway, we go back to Super Metronome Groovebox when that happens. But there is a really cool thing coming up inside Vibrant Music Teaching for members who are watching. We are going to be releasing something that I'm calling the Big Bag of Drumming Tracks is my working title. May not be called that in the end, but basically it's going to be 60 different drumming tracks for lots of different situations. And I know you're going to love it. It's going to just be a big bag of drumming tracks that you can use all different speeds, four different time signatures, ready to go. You can just play them. So that's going to be really handy. But Super Metronome Groovebox is another great option. Okay, number four. Number four. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Number four is iReal Pro. I right now have a super messy score <laughs> loaded, so you're going to be scared of it. But let's load something fan there. Okay, here's a simple blues. I happen to have a Piano Man one that's all overlapping and stuff and it's not for looking at, it's just because of how long the song was. I overlapped everything. So anyway, this is iReal Pro. If you haven't seen it before, it's a, a, basically an app for creating backing tracks or loading them in. And then there's all these different styles like this. So if that was bluegrass instead. Amazing, right? Okay, that is iReal Pro. We do have a tutorial here on the YouTube channel about that. It's called Create Your Own Chord Chart in iReal Pro. If you find that a bit confusing, I get it is for kind of tech savvy people. I did move a bit too fast. So we're coming... Later this year, I'm going to release a new one that's a lot slower and more descriptive of exactly what I'm pressing because I realized I was using some jargon in that video. However, if you are fairly tech savvy and you want to give that a go, you could look that up. You could look up other tutorials. I find a lot of iReal Pro tutorials, they come from people from a different background than you or I in for the most part. So they don't come from a notation background, really. They tend to be people who would be reading just chord charts all the time and not even lead sheets, but chord charts a lot. And so things that seem instinctive to uh, to them are to us make no sense. So I'm trying to, in the new tutorial that I've put together, it's more like you're coming from a piano background. Here's what doesn't seem instinctive and here's how it actually works. So I hope that will be helpful later this year. But in the meantime, you can dive in, you can use it, you can experiment with it. It is really fun to use. And it is another alternative for drumming tracks because you can take away the other instruments and just have the drummer if you want to use that as a drumming track as well. So that's another option. Then we have one that I'm not even going to show you because it would be very silly. YouTube. <laughs> Okay, it's not a special music app. It's not like, it's no secret, right? I'm sure you already have it. However, YouTube has so many different uses for the piano studio and having it on your iPad, I think is really handy because you can just put that on the stand in front of your student. If you want to show them something that is, you know, they need to see it, just put it on the stand. It's so much easier than having to turn around your computer or anything like that. Or maybe you don't have a computer at your teaching desk, which is fair enough. So iPad is really easy to have on hand for that. So tell me what you use YouTube for in lessons. We use it to look up music that my student is requesting or that they've asked about and to look up um, performances a lot of pieces that they're playing. So looking up different performances, comparing and contrasting them and talking about the different decisions that the performer has made. It's also great if you have a specific technique in mind and you want to kind of prove to your student that it comes up or how it's done. It's great to look up concert pianists for that and see them in action. Or in particular, if I'm getting a student to do quite a big gesture 
and especially if they're like a teen and they're kind of embarrassed to take up that much space, I show them these concert pianists who aren't like the super flary ones. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about just, you know, regular straight lace concert pianists, if, if that's a thing. Showing them how big their movements sometimes are and how it doesn't look out of place. It just feels weird when you first do it. So that's some of the things we use YouTube for, but I'd love to hear if you have um, other things that come up for you in your studio. But I use YouTube all the time. The other one I'm not going to show you is Google Sheets. I use this for our progress reports. And if you want to see the progress, uh, their weekly progress reports or weekly progress tracking in action, we have a separate, a, a whole YouTube live, like one of these shows where I went through how I fill those in. Um, and that's the best place to look. I can't load it up for you now because I haven't set it up to anonymize the students and stuff. So I'm not going to show you it today. But that's how I use uh, Google Sheets a lot, is for tracking that data. And it's handy to have it on an iPad because I can move around a lot more and still be typing in or checking things. I also use that sheet a lot in our, my weekly meetings with the other teachers who work here. And again, I just like to be able to sit in whatever corner of the room and just have that on my knee um, on an iPad rather than just for quick reference, rather than having like a computer that's kind of in my way when I'm trying to really connect with the other teachers and have proper conversations with them. And then my last one that I am going to show you of the seven, and then we'll go through rapid fire bonus ones. <laughs> um, my last one is ClickUp. Let me find it. Okay, so ClickUp is what we use at Vibrant Music Teaching and in my studio for keeping track of to-do items, tasks, and systems. So I'm just going to show you the studio area. So this is, for example, uh, the studio area of ClickUp. So I just keep a separate section of ClickUp for the studio, but you you wouldn't need to have it all segmented off like that. You don't have to do it that way. It's just that I have vibrant music teaching and loads of stuff going on there. And then the studio is still within the same ClickUp because I want it kept together, but it's kept in this separate space as they're called in ClickUp. And these are tasks. The checklists that you see are for the teachers that work here and they're just daily, like these are the things you need to do and they recur automatically. Then we have office supplies checklist, make sure we have these things in stock um, and cleaning things and then updating rote repertoire because we keep adding the new rote repertoire pieces in Tanara. What would usually be in here and a lot of times of year is a lot of new student dot dot this student's name. At the moment there's none because towards the end of the year we don't have new students because we're full um, and we've remained full. <laughs> for the last while, but I have a whole series of tasks that we do for all new students. And so that is something that you would see in there a lot of the year. And that'll be a series of tasks that automatically, so I duplicate the new student um, checklist or whatever you want to call it, and then write the new student's name there. And it automatically switches out all the dates for me. And there I know it's going to show up and remind me to email the parent after the first lesson and make sure everything's set up right for them. It's going to remind me to prepare their folder before they even start. It's going to remind me to add them to our mailing systems, all that kind of stuff. So if you're curious about ClickUp, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Carrie, I love it. I way prefer to Asana, which would be the most similar alternative. We moved... Um, Oh my gosh, it must be a couple of years ago now, but it was a big move to leave Asana for us, but it's been totally worth it. I do prefer it. However, I do show both systems in our Smooth Studio Systems course inside Vibrant Music Teaching. So if you want to set up this kind of thing for your studio, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I just do things as they come, as they come up and I always feel kind of scattered with it, then this is a great thing to put in place. Our Smooth Studio Systems course helps you do that and I have um, pre-built 
like templates to get you started in ClickUp or in Asana, whichever you prefer. So, um, yeah, saves a lot of time. And it is so, it gives you such peace of mind when you have those kind of systems in place. All right, so that is ClickUp. I love it. Um, the only reason it's on my iPad, though, I will explain. Most of the time I use it on desktop. Okay, so that's why it came out number seven in this list. Most of the time I use it on desktop. The reason I have it on my iPad is because I refuse to put it on my phone. <laughs> and I refuse to put it on my phone because I know myself and I will just check like work things on my phone and that's terribly unhealthy when I take my few hours off per day, right? So the reason that's on the iPad though and not just left on desktop is if I'm traveling or if I need to use the click up in a different location for whatever reason I can use it on the iPad and that works great and it means I'm not constantly checking it because I don't open my iPad just like automatically like we do with our phones right on autopilot I don't do that with the iPad so that's why it's there okay then I'm gonna go through rapid fire a few other honorable mentions <laughs> and these are all ones that I don't use in lessons pretty much ever unless it's to demonstrate them to a student, show them how to use it. These are ones that I recommend to parents for home use. And I used to use them a bit in lessons and I've actually found I use the iPad way less and technology in general way less in lessons since the whole pandemic um, happened and even a little bit before that because I don't want unnecessary screen time. I don't want to be using technology just for the sake of it. I want it to be, this is the best tool for this situation. So at home, often it is the best tool because they don't have a teacher who's going to, you know, flip flashcards for them or interact with them in that way, test them on things, whatever, play games with them. So here are a few examples of apps that I recommend to students. So I'm just going to go through some of the folders here. The first folder I call composing. It's a loose term for it, but anyway. Um, Music Lab I wouldn't recommend as much. And again, these are listed in the description. GarageBand I do use occasionally with students in lessons, but mostly for teens and stuff, it's great for them to use at home. Loopamool and Melody Jams, those first two you're seeing. Those are really fun for students, younger students to play around with, mess around with at home to create different music. It's not something where they, it's like super structured, but it's a great alternative to playing something mindless um, if they're using an iPad. So I do suggest those to parents. Next, we have the note names folder. These are my favorite note naming apps. We've got Ningenius. It says NGM Studio because it's a studio version, but Ningenius is... A really fun one it's obviously a ninja theme you can completely customize the notes so that's great flash note derby or as you would call it flash note derby is i shouldn't say you I mean, if you're in the us or canada you would say derby flash note derby is um a horse race the graphics are like not the most up-to-date but it's still really fun kids love it and you can uh, select whatever notes you like so that's really really good one. Uh, Note Rush, I know is many people's favorite. I do like that one as well. And it does listen to the piano so you can play the note as the answer to make sure students are doing it in the right octave. That's really great. And then NoteQuest is probably the newest to me. We had Grace Lee, who's the creator of NoteQuest, on the show a while ago. And she's also speaking at the Teacher Turbo booth next week, which is really fun. So NoteQuest is great because it's the only one that tests intervals in a way that actually makes sense. Literally the only app I found. If you find another one, I'd love to hear it. I'm not tied to any one particular app. But yeah, it is great for that. It's literally unique as far as I've found. Gladys, quickly answer that question. I do teach students mostly face-to-face -face now. I taught online for a long time, basically all of last year, three months of the previous year, academic year that is. This academic year, we've been only online when needed, which happens fairly frequently, obviously with close contacts, et cetera, et cetera, but we're still primarily face-to-face. -face. Okay, that's note names and intervals for NoteQuest. 
In the oral section, I would suggest two of these as priority. T-M-A-S-G stands for The Most Addicting Sheep Game. And this is great if you have a student who has no sense of beat or pulse. This would be a great prescription that they won't have a clue they're working on developing that, but they will be. And it is really addictive and it's really fun. Easy Music, I would also suggest as a one of the few apps that really does work on preschool level music skills. So that's great. Young beginners. Then we have, oh, I thought Piano Maestro was in there and it isn't. But anyway, Piano Maestro uh, would normally be in that folder. I'll put it back there. That would be another suggestion. I don't find myself using it much anymore, but some students like it for home use. So that's good. If they want to do that for sight reading, I do think it's great. Oh, Lee, that's really good to know. Thank you for sharing that. It's not the most addicting. It's the most amazing sheep game. Thank you. Um, I didn't know they changed it. And then last one to share with you, I think. Oh, no, second last is Tenuto. This is a great one if you have adults or just students who need something very plain and simple and just theory review. This is very extensive, but quite like straightforward. Dull <laughs> would be the <laughs> not so positive term, but it's a very straightforward app. It's just flashcards, drilling, but can be exactly what you need when you need that. And then the last one I'll suggest is music lock, flash music clock. Um, and that is a great one for scale backing tracks. Now, if you have VMT membership, you have amazing scale backing tracks. So I don't use this anymore, but for students to use at home, if for some reason they can't play the backing tracks you send to them, or if you're just not a VMT member and you can't do that right now, Music Lock is a great, great way to get started with working with backing tracks for scales, which I think is an awesome thing to do. All right, so that is all my apps. I know the last one was just a blast through those and a very brief thing. But it was mostly just if one of them particularly stands out to you, like, oh, I've been looking for something like that. All the names are in the description, so you can check that out and dive into them further, explore the app or share it with parents. Always explore it before you share it with parents. You don't want to share something you don't fully agree with. All right, with that, we'll get into our question section. So hit me up with your questions. The big hair is back. I wish I could touch it. Can I pretend to touch it? It can't, It's a pretty good one. As far as these snap filters go, I'd say this one is pretty good. Even if I do this, it doesn't like mess up. Anyway, that's me getting distracted by my big hair. Let me know your questions. Um, I'll just check I didn't miss any earlier on. No, I got all of them so far. So. Unless you add some in now, we'll be wrapping up and you won't see much of my big hair. So if you do have any questions, let me know. I want to let you know about a couple of things. So first of all, we have a two week break from the show after today. So we won't have a show next week or the week after. Next week, I am hosting the Teacher Turbo Boost Conference. If you want to come along to that, you need to sign up before it starts. We don't do a replay pass. You do get access to replays if you sign up, but we don't um, allow you to sign up after it's started. Okay, so I have to sign up this week. TeacherTurboBoost.com is where you'll find all the information on that. That's what I'm doing next week. And then the week after that, I'm out of here. I'm off. I'm out of the office. So that is two weeks off. And then we'll be back here on the show. When we do come back, we're starting up our book club again. Our book club pick is The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle, and that we're going to do one chapter a week. Very simple. So from the day we come back, one chapter a week, chapter one, chapter two, etc. You get the picture. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get ahead on that on my week off, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe I won't even be up to reading after the conference. It is, it's one of those things where like, I'd say like performing, although I'm not a big performer, but it's it's like five days of a lot of adrenaline, honestly, to the system. 
<laughs> and so there is a bit of a crash. So I may just collapse for my week off and that is a-okay with me. Um, Anna, so glad you're looking forward to it. It's going to be great to have you there. Okay, so that is all the things I needed to catch you up with. Do let me know if you have any questions about the conference or about my use of iPad apps or about why I don't have this hair permanently. All questions welcome after the fact. And I will see you in a few weeks. Bye, everyone.